In this YouTube video, I give an overview and demonstration of a piece of vintage test equipment, the ICO Model 377 Sign and Square Wave Audio Generator. ICO was the Electronic Instrument Corporation founded in New York City in 1945 and a manufacturer of electronic test equipment, amateur radio, and consumer products. Like Heathkit, many of their products were offered in kit form. The company went out of business in the late 1970s. ICO was perhaps best known for their tube testers. I own an ICO Model 666 tester, which I covered in another YouTube video. An audio generator is a piece of test equipment that produces electronic waveforms at audio frequencies, roughly speaking from 20 to 20,000 hertz, or cycles per second. Depending on the unit, they can produce various types of waveforms, the most common being sine and square waves. They find use in testing and troubleshooting of various types of electronic equipment, including radio and audio amplifiers. Next to a multimeter, it's probably one of the most commonly used pieces of test equipment. The ICO 377 can produce sine and square waves over a frequency range from 20 to 200,000 hertz. Output is adjustable up to about 10 volts RMS into a 1,000 ohm load. It's a tube-based design making use of five vacuum tubes. I imagine it was produced in the 1950s and possibly into the 1960s. An allied radio catalog from 1956 listed it at a price of $32. I believe it was offered both as a kit and as an assembled unit. The frequency calibration is reported as accurate to plus or minus 3% and output level is constant within plus or minus 1 dB from 60 Hz to 150 kilohertz. Although it goes up to 200 kilohertz, the square wave output is only rated as within specifications up to 30 kilohertz. It weighs about 20 pounds and runs from AC power. It uses a Wien bridge oscillator circuit that uses a lamp to regulate the level of feedback. The manual is very complete and covers applications, theory of operation, calibration and maintenance, and the circuit schematic. Applications for the unit include frequency measurement using headphones or oscilloscope to compare the generated frequency with the frequency to be measured. The square wave output can be used to test amplifiers for frequency response and distortion. Taking a look inside the unit, you can see it uses a heavy steel chassis with tubes and other major components mounted on it. Note that some of the tubes inside are ICO branded. On the underside, you can see all of the point-to-point -point wiring. Note the lamp, which is used to regulate the circuit and does not visibly light up during operation. It would not meet some of today's safety standards, lacking a fuse and grounded plug, but it does use a power transformer, making it safer than some of the older tube-based equipment. As far as I can tell, all parts on this unit are original. Let's take a look at the unit in operation. I've connected the output to an oscilloscope so we can visually see the output. From turn on it takes a few seconds for the tubes to warm up and start operating. To operate, select sine or square waveform using this switch. Let's start with sine. Set the range switch to one of the four ranges. Each range covers a frequency range of about 10. Let's select range B, 200 to 2000 Hertz. We set the frequency on the large dial. Let it set it to about a thousand. We can see at approximately one kilohertz sine wave on the scope. The level control adjusts the output level. About 10 volts RMS at maximum. Changing the frequency, you can observe it change on the scope. If we change to band C, we can now see a 10 kilohertz signal. Now let's change to square wave output. Finally, let's go to the highest frequency band, band D. The sine wave waveform appears quite clean all the way up to a maximum of about 200 kilohertz.
the square wave output starts to get distorted beyond about 30 kilohertz as expected. It can produce enough output to drive a loudspeaker. If you do that, you can hear the output. It could be fun to test how high a frequency you can hear. You can also clearly hear the difference between sine and square waves. I purchased this unit on eBay in 2005. It came with the original manual including the warranty card and service information. As received, it was in very good cosmetic and electrical condition. All functions were working, the sine and square wave outputs were very clean, and the calibration was accurate. This unit appears to be the factory assembled version. Like most ICO equipment, the Model 377 was a good solid piece of test equipment. In my opinion, Ike equipment was never up to the same quality as Heathkit when it came to features, appearance, and assembly manuals. These units are pretty common, and Ico undoubtedly sold a lot of them over the years. This particular unit is still working like new after some 50 years. By today's standards, it's large, heavy, power-hungry, and lacking in features, but it's still useful, and I've used it for testing and debugging various pieces of equipment, both old and new. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.